I'm the one. Wanna fight, huh? Fight me! Kick, punch, it's all in the mind. If you wanna test me, I'm sure you'll find the things that I teach you is sure to beat you. Nevertheless, I get a lesson from teacher. Hi, Not Board Gamers, and welcome back to Not Board Gaming. I'm your host, I'm Mark. Now, today we're going to be reviewing Street Masters Aftershock by Blacklist Games. So, if you've seen any of my videos, you can see that I'm a finely crafted, highly toned athlete of a person. Well, maybe not, maybe never was. However, back in my youth and for about 15 years, I studied Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I'm actually a second hand black belt in Jiu Jitsu, and fighting games have always been of interest to me since I was a uh, you know, a lot younger, you know, discovering them on the uh, on either the um, uh, the Commodore 64 or on the Super Nintendo, and right from the early days of Double Dragon, Streets of Rage, through to Street Fighter, uh, and Tekken and beyond, I've always had a love of fighting games. I'll caveat by saying that I'm generally terrible at them at the same time. However, however, <laughs> the ability and the opportunity to get a fighting game within a board game really, really grabbed me. Now, I wasn't around in board games when the original Street Masters um, came to fruition uh, on Kickstarter, so I missed that initial, uh, that initial Kickstarter. And since I got into board game, I've always wanted a copy of Street Masters. Earlier this year, the Saddlers and Blacklist Games uh, had a Kickstarter for the Aftershock edition of Street uh, so, <laughs> of, uh, of Street Masters, and I, of course I went as much as I could at the, at the time. Now there are a few parts of it I don't have. I don't have the player mats. I don't have the redemption pack, and I don't have the um, uh, the Gen Con uh, promos as well. But I do have most of the stuff of uh, Street Masters now. And um, obviously, when it came through, I was so so excited to play. Unfortunately, it arrived on the day I was leaving for Essen, so I had to wait kind of four or five days or five days to come back and, and really delve into Street Masters. If you're interested in what's in the boxes that I got, then I did an unboxing video for Street Masters Aftershock, and you can check that out by following that link up there, and that will give you a great overview of exactly what you've had inside the box. Now, since coming back from Essen in kind of the four weeks I've been back, I've played a lot of games of Street Masters. I wanted to really delve into the heart of this game and find out if it's a game for me. And I've probably played around about 25 or 30 times, and that's a lot of play for one particular game in a short amount of time. So I was genuinely, genuinely very excited when I received this package, as you can tell from the um, from the unboxing video if you've watched it. Um, now the box itself, Aftershock, is a huge behemoth of a box with some wonderful, wonderful artwork on there. And I pinked out the inside of my box ever so slightly because you do get a wealth of miniatures. And what I've done is I have... I went out and I bought this little um, storage unit and each of these has various factions inside. So when I put that back in my box, it does mean that the box stands ever so slightly proud, uh, which is not the end of the world, uh, because I do manage to store everything inside one box. And I've not tested it yet, but I'm pretty certain it'll fit on a Kallax shelf. So, this is all well and good. I was excited. It harkens back to my video gaming youth. It harkens back to the days of when I was doing martial arts. It harkens back and really kind of captures the essence of what I wanted from, or what I wanted, thought I wanted to find from a fighting game. However, all this wonderful content and all of the gameplay that's in there uh, is nothing if I don't actually like the game. And that's what this review is about, obviously. It's my thoughts on Street Masters, Aftershock, by Blacklist Games. Do, do I like this game? Is, is it a boom? Or is it a bit of a damp squib? Is it more kind of um, chow yum fat? Or is it Steven Cigar? Let's go and find out. So Street Masters by Blacklist Games is a card-based, dice-rolling, <laughs> combat, almost a skirmish game, where you are going to take the form of, as a solo player, either one or more fighters, and in the, uh, in the game, in the expansions that I've got, I've got a total of 24 fighters to choose from, and you are going to battle one of the gangs, and in the game that I've got, I have 
I think, 13 different games on one of the stages. And these stage boards are double-sided, so there's a stage on each side. And in total, I have 28 stages. So this card-based dice-rolling combat game gives me, again, 24 times 28 times 13 permutations where I can battle and play Street Masters against these dastardly gangs. And what the game of the game is, is it's not deep. It's a fighting game. Your hero or heroes are going to take on the gang and try and defeat the bad guys and also complete some objectives at the same time. At the same time that you're doing that, the bad guy and the gangs are going to be ever increasing. His minions are going to be coming onto the board and trying to defeat you, as well as completing their own objectives. And also the stage itself, each stage has a number of cards and these cards are going to alter the way that you play the game. So it is this kind of... Um, almost endless permutations of the ways that you can play Street Masters. The core game doesn't change, but there are loads and loads of permutations and the differences in the ways that you can play the game. Now, as you can see from the footprint and how I set this out, it's not a massive game to kind of get on the table. And one of the good things about it and the Aftershock box is how efficient that box makes setup and tear down. So before we actually delve into the gameplay, let's take a very, very brief look at just the inside of the after box and how efficient it is. So, although I've already done an unboxing video, I think uh, what I want to do is just show you what is actually inside the box very, 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 very quickly, because I think the great thing about Aftershock is that there's a place for everything and everything has its place. So as you lift the lid off, and it is huge, and there's a storage solution that I spoke about earlier, uh, you can see that more or less everything else fits wonderfully inside the box. So these are the number of different playing tiles that you get or boards that you get and they are double sided so a large number of those and as you can see here sorry for knocking the camera as you can see there are a number of trays which capture everything now i have pimped out my tokens by putting them in little plastic containers but as you lift off the various trays you can see and there's the dice that there's a wealth and a plethora of all the various cards in here as well. And there is a space for absolutely everything if you don't sleeve uh, your cards. If you do sleeve, I think you'll have a bit of a problem fitting everything in there. But that's one of the beauties of just how simple this game is to set up. Everything goes back in the box nice and easy. And when you are setting the game up, you literally pick a fighter, pick a stage, pick a bad guy, set your tokens up. That's it. You're ready to go. So even without the wonders that are the Aftershock box, a game of Street Masters is exceptionally easy to set up. First thing you're going to do is you're going to choose the stage. And here I've gone for the Gomballistic stage. And each stage comes with its own series of cards. And they will dictate what happens on each round, as the, uh, an event that happens each round, as the game progresses. You're also going to choose a gang to fight. And here I've chosen the Brotherhood. And again, within these cards you have various things. Minions that will come out, events that will take take place and also gear that will go to the main bad guy and the main bad guy of this particular gang is Dimitri. He's got some kind of rocket launcher that's attached to him there and he's got a specific sp uh, space on the board where he goes and you can see Dimitri also has a card. So that's two parts of the game set up. What you're also going to do is choose your fighter. Now from the myriad fighters in there that come with the box I've chosen Kyoryu and his fighter card has two sides. The first is his basic side and this is essentially a move that he can carry out every turn but as you can see here you've got this symbol which means you charge your fighters throughout the game and as you charge them you will get to reach this number of points that's different for each fighter and here we see six and when you reach the right number of, of uh, charges on there you can flip it over to get a one hit kind of uh, extra special move which once you've used you can then revert back to the other side and build the charges up and Dimitri sorry and Kyoryu starts on a specific space on each board or your fighter starts on a space on each board and also what happens is of course Kyoryu and all the fighters have their own deck of cards as well and to start the game you're going to deal yourself a hand of four cards and what I've got here is I've, I've dealt myself out four Kyoryu cards and as you can see they're all different but there are some of the cards are duplicated so there is the possibility on your first draw that you could draw out some of the same cards and Street Masters allows you to take a mulligan 
uh, on your very first go, which means you can discard some of those cards, put them in the discard pile, and draw out additional cards to replace them. So that helps you kind of beef up your starting hand. Now, once you set the entirety of the board up, the game itself is going to follow a very simple rule structure. And you get these nice kind of indicative cards which tell you the rule structure that goes on there. The first thing you're going to do is going to be the threat phase. And what you do for that is you take a card from the gang pile, you flip it over, and it tells you what you need to do. And in this case, you're going to take Drago, who's one of the minions, which is this guy. You're going to put a green base on him, which is there. And then you're going to place him on one of the spawning places that's closest to your fighter. And in this case, I've already got somebody there, so this would be this space up here. And also, I'm going to put two grapple defense tokens on there because he comes out with two grapple defense. And that's it. That's the first thing, which is the threat phase. You're kind of lining up the bad guys in your threat area to come out and battle you. Then we move on to the kind of the act phase where your fighter starts to take their turn. Let's have a look at how that works. So during the act phase, it follows a set of three different types of moves that you can take in any particular order that you choose. And you don't have to take all three types as well. So the first one is the move step. And for the move step, your fighter can move three spaces. So if you look here, Kyorio is, uh, is quite close to Anastasia. He's about three spaces away. So we're going to take that move step and move him one, two, three. So he's now adjacent to and engaged with Anastasia. Of course, it could well be that Anastasia is far off and that uh, Kyorio wants to move towards uh, Dimitri and he would do it that way. But no, for this particular one, we're going to move next to Anastasia and become engaged with them. Then the next move that you can take, and again, these are in any order, is the card step. And on the card step, what you do is your hand of four cards that you get, uh, you get to choose one of these cards to play. And there are three different types of cards in reality. There are attack cards and ability cards, which you play straight away and you use the action on, on them straight away. And then you put them in your discard pile, but you also get your tactic cards as well. And what tactic cards do is you play them into your your player area and they build up the abilities of your fighter as the game progresses. That means that the abilities on there you get to use each and every turn. So for example for this one let's say that we will play this Tempest or a Bakudan tactic card and that goes into my area and that's got a couple of items on there. The first one is an exhaust so if I use this I exhaust it which turns it to the right it means I can't use it again for the rest of that go and that gives me an attack of one dice or I could use the faint action which means I use it like an act uh, like a like an attack ability and I discard the card but I will use the ability that's on there as well so that's now in my area the final part that I can take is now the action step and you can take again any one of these actions in this particular step the sprint action I could use that to move again so effectively that would give me six moves per turn but no real attack per turn on that one the defend action I could gain two random defense tokens We'll come on to defense token soon. Card action, I can actually play a card that's in my player area and use the attack ability on there, or interact action. And sometimes there are objectives on the map which allow you to interact. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to play a card action and we're going to play Kyo Rio's card of Channel Tempest. And also we're going to back that up by using the Orobakudan exhaust ability. Let's have a look at how that works and the impact it will have on, uh, on Anastasia. But just before we get into that, let's talk about the dice system that comes with Street Masters. Now, if you've played any of the Saddlers and Blacklist Games modular deck systems before, in maybe uh, in maybe Brook City, or you've seen what's happening in Alter Quest, you've seen Hour of Need coming up, and certainly I've played uh, a stage of Contra as well, and it works the same way. Is that the Saddlers have done us gamers a great favour. Now, the problem with dice rolls is, of course, they are look-based. And when you have any system that has dice in it, chances are is that it's going to have a large element of looking there. But the Saddlers have compensated for that with us in terms of what they do with the modular deck system and certainly in Street Masters. 
in the fact that these attack dice that you get, and in my core game I've got four, and I could have done with more, let me tell you that. If you get the opportunity, do buy an extra set. <clears throat> there are no misses on these die. So the first thing you can see on here is this symbol, and this means a hit. This means that you've actually performed some kind of damage against them if they haven't uh, blocked or defended it. The second symbol you can see is this, and this is a defense token symbol. And you will get, if you roll that symbol, a defense token based on the type of attack that you've made. So if I'd have rolled that symbol on my channel Tempest here, that's a punch attack, I would have got a punch defense token. You also get this symbol, which is a critical hit. And what this means is you get to roll an additional dice. So it may well be that your particular attack only has one or two dice rolls, but if you score critical hits, you can keep and chain these attacks going. And the final face that you can see is a hit and a defense token on the same face as well. So you get the best of both worlds there. There are no misses with these dice, and that's a really, really good system. That kind of mitigates the amount amount of uh, luck and uh, that, that, that can go against you in fighting here. However, it's not a guarantee that you are going to get the dice rolls that you want. Because, of course, you may have two dice and you may want two hits and you may roll two defense tokens, which means that your bad guy hasn't sustained any damage whatsoever. On the other side, when you get attacked, you will roll these attack dice. And what this will do is these bad guys will roll a number of these dice against you and whatever the symbol that comes up with, so we, there we go, we've got a kick, we've got a punch, and we've also got a grapple there. Uh, that means the type of attack that you will suffer in uh, in response to their damage. However, there are ways to mitigate that again with the various defense tokens. So that's how the dice work, the dice rolling works in this and in most, if not all, of the modular deck system games. So let's jump back in and find out what kind of damage we're going to do to Anastasia. So here we go, I'm now adjacent to Anastasia, and therefore Kyu Ryu, my fighter, can now attack her. And the first attack I'm going to do is going to be my Channel Tempest attack card on Kyu Ryu's player card. Now, this stays in the game uh, throughout, so unlike your other attack actions, which you will then discard after using, you get to use this each round. And it says here, roll two attack dice, and after this attack, gain one power for each Tempest card you control. So I have two attack dice, and I'm going to roll them, and look straight away... I got two critical hits. That means I get to uh, inflict two punch damage to Anastasia and roll another two dice. So here we go. And I've got yet another critical hit and a hit again. So I've now got four hits against Anastasia. I can roll one of these dice again because I got that critical hit. And there we go. I get a fifth hit and a defense token. So if we look at Anastasia's card, she has two defense tokens, one for punch and one for grapple. Uh, sorry, one for kick and one for grapple. I'm doing a punch attack, so I go straight through those, and I'm going to deliver a whopping five damage to Anastasia because I rolled five hits in total. Bear in mind that one of these was a reroll for the dice. That's where I said if you can get an extra set of dice, it really does help. That means I have delivered five damage towards Anastasia, which is absolutely great, which means she's obviously obliterated and removed from the game there. It does say here, after this attack, gain one power for each Tempest card you control. Now, on the back of each of these tokens is a power token, so I'm going to put that on Kyurio's player card, and that means when I get to six, I can flip that open, uh, flip that over. And here, I've also got a defense token, which means I get a punch defense as well. Uh, so now, I've kind of beefed up my defenses. I've got a power token. I've obliterated Anastasia. She's going to get removed from the game. But say I'd only carried out three damage to Anastasia. So instead of having five, she had three. That means she still had one left. I would have been then been able to use my tactic ability here, and I could exhaust the card for another attack die. Uh, and it says uh, this attack deals general damage and uh, and uh, and may target an enemy within six spaces. Well, obviously she's fairly close, so I would move that to the right. I would roll one dice, and there we go. I got a critical hit. Now, because it's general damage, what that means is that either of these attack to or these defense tokens actually works. I would discard that. But as you can see already. Very early on in the game, I've got the ability to string together a, a decent-ish, a smallish combo, which gives me some additional power and also a defense token. And that is your attack. Uh, your attack done for this portion of the game. Now we're going to move on to the react phase and see how the baddies react against us. 
So now we're going to move into the react phase. Now in our threat phase, we took a card from the enemy deck and if it was a minion, we placed it in our threat area. And what you do here is you activate each of these threats left to right. Now the very first threat I've got here is Anastasia, who I've just attacked and I've given her three damage just for the, uh, just for the sake of this, uh, this example. And you can see Anastasia has a card and she's got a health of four. And this, to this symbol here means that she rolls one attack or one of the uh, body attack dies against me. And her activate action says, if unengaged, deal the nearest fighter within six spaces with this enemy, one direct damage. Now direct damage comes straight off your health, so nothing can block direct damage. In if, una in if unable to, move three spaces to be within six spaces of the nearest fighter. That means obviously, hopefully next turn, she can then at uh, attack him, attack that fighter. However, Anastasia is engaged with me because she's next to me. So it says, if engaged, attack, then retreat three spaces. So as I say, she gets one of the enemy attack dice, which are these uh, white die here. And here we go. I've rolled a kick, um, a kick kick attack against me. I don't have any kick tokens. So, what uh, any kick defense tokens, what that means is I sustained one damage off my 20 and I'm now down to 19. However, had Anastasia rolled a punch damage, Kyoryu already has a punch token. That means he would have inflicted, uh, sorry, he would have sustained no damage and that punch token would then be flicked over to its power side. And that's how you can gain power tokens. So we'd already got one from having the Tempest card in our, in our attack to Anastasia. So that was one. We now have another because I've successfully defended against a punch token. That means that Kyoryu now has two of the four required power tokens, which will enable him to flip over his card and play his special move. So that's Anastasia's turn done. And now we've also got Drago on the board as well. And here we can see, and Drago's way off in the distance. He's kind of up here on the board and I'm down here. And it says here, uh, uh, activate, advance three spaces towards the nearest fighter and attack. Then if unengaged, gain one random defense token. Well, he's way away. I mean, Drago's way up here and I'm way down here. So he's gonna uh, advance three towards me. That's one, two, three. And he's gonna gain a random defense token. How do you determine that? Well, you roll an attack die, and there we go. That's come up as a kick, and Drago now has an attack, uh, sorry, a kick defense token. And that is the react phase done. Obviously, throughout the game, more minions will get put out, and they will line up on the board, and you will have more coming at you. Then after the react phase, what you do is you ready everything that you've done here, so any exhausted cards that you've done, you draw one card from your deck, ready for your hand next time, then, we're going to flip that over and move on to the enemy turn and then the stage turn. Let's talk about how the enemy turn works. So defeating minions is all very well and good and it adds a really good tactical element to the game. But of course, you do not get to beat the game by only defeating the minions. What you've got to do is, of course, defeat the big bad, the boss head. And in this case, this particular boss is Dimitri. And as you can see, he's got a rocket launcher with him here. So now you move on to the, the kind of the enemy phase where the boss takes their turn. And each enemy has a boss card. There we go. And he's got 20 health per player. So if you're playing two players or double-handed, then you're going to have to inflict 40. If you're playing four players, you're going to have to inflict 80 against him. And he would roll four of his attacks die against me if he was engaged with me. However, he's not at this stage. So what we do here is we activate. And it says here for Dimitri, Dimitri attacks. If unable to, of course he can't because I'm not next to him, resolve his equip effect, then D Dimitri re retreats one space. So what it says here is equip. Discard, discard the top card of the enemy deck. Uh, then put the topmost gear card in the enemy discard pile into play. If no gear enters play this way, Dimitri gains one random defense token. That would be a roll of this white dice. However, the top card we got here is Dimitri's modified RPG-7. So that's a rocket pile grenade there. And this, so this will go into his area. So the next time he plays, he goes, he would actually we'd say here, he can't activate, uh, sorry, he can't attack, but we would activate this and it says, if this card has no power token on it, place one power token on it, that's fine. Otherwise, Dimitri chooses the nearest fighter, discards one power token from this card to attack each figure within four spaces of that fighter. So what that would do is, here I am, I'm down here. If that had a power token on it, I'd discard that. I would roll my dice and that would deliver four, one, two, three, four of these white uh, attack dice against me. So that's two kick, one punch, oh, sorry, two kick and two punch against me, but it will also deliver damage to any figure 
within four space of where I'd attack. That's quite a devastating thing. And as you can see from what I said on that, that goes each and every, sorry, every other go. So you would put a power token on it, then the next go you would discard that and fire, then the next go you would put a power token on it, then the go after that you would discard that and fire, and that would go on. And you can see that this would build up, and there are a number of events in here, a number of gear tokens in here, sorry, gear cards in here, which will actually strengthen Dimitri as the game goes on. So as your fighter is getting stronger by building up his defense tokens and his power tokens and stringing his tactics together for combos, your boss is also going to get get stronger and stronger by unleashing more of the cards in this in this particular pack. But as you can see, Dimitri hasn't actually moved here. Well, he's retreated one, but he hasn't moved anywhere close to me. So is it down to me to chase him, or is he going to move somewhere else on the board? That's where the next stage comes in after the enemy phase, which is the stage phase. Let's have a look at how that works. So now we're on to the final sequence of the turns, and it's the stage turn. So as I mentioned earlier, each of these player boards um, is double-sided, and each side is called something different, and it all, and each one has its own event deck, or its stage deck there. And initially, the first thing that you're gonna do is activate the cards that are already in the stage play area from left to right, always left to right. And the first one here, it says, um, activate, resolve the objective effect on the inactive objective nearest the boss and these these uh, objective tokens here depending on what stage you're on sometimes they're on the board sometimes they aren't on the board and you place them on the board and here we go so there's one on the board here which is the green one and here's the card for it and it says the objective here is move the boss three spaces towards this objective then if in this objective space the boss picks up this objective so Dimitri would move one, two, three to be next to this objective. If he was there, he would pick that up, put it on Dimitri's card. If at any point he's carrying three objectives in this particular stage, which has gone ballistic, then he's won the game. Of course, you, if you attack Dimitri, he will drop objectives. So you're activating these left to right, and then what you do, and then what you do, is you draw a new card. And this card here, oh, we've got a, a gear card here, and it's a hidden ballistic vest. And it says here, Attach this card to the minion with the least remaining health. Then that minion heals two damage and gains one random defense token. If no minion's in play, the boss gains two random defense tokens. So I put that on Anastasia, give her two health back and a random defense token, and that's it. That is the stage area done, and of course you would do that every single go. So what you get here is this kind of cyclical nature of the turns is you create, sorry, you unearth a new a new barrier or a new, new card from the, from the gang deck and put a minion into play or put gear into play. Then you take your turns. Then you activate anything in your, uh, in, in your enemy area. Then you move on to the boss and you do whatever the boss does. And then you move on to the stage and you activate the stage cards and draw new stage cards. And then it goes back to you. And that's how the game continues. It's very, very, very straightforward. And you will do that until one of two outcomes happens. You either defeat the boss or defeat the objectives and you win the game or or they defeat you by giving you so much damage that all your health is gone and you lose the game. And that is the simplicity of Street Masters. So that is, in essence, how Street Masters play, except there is even more to it. So what you can do in the game to either increase the difficulty or decrease the difficulty in the game, and some certain scenarios ask you to do this anyway, is you can have either a rival or an ally. And what these are, these are additional characters that you will put into the game. Now, allies obviously help you out. They almost act as fighters and they will absorb damage and maybe give damage as well. And if you flip the token onto the other side, which is the purple side, uh, you, will, you can use the same character as a rival, and of course, as a rival, they're working for the bad guys and will make the game more difficult. And um, you also get loot cards as well. So on the map, on the map, you will place five crate tokens, and these crate tokens, when you pass through them, allow you to pick up a loot card. And these loot cards. I don't know if you remember the chicken leg uh, on the floor from uh, Streets of Rage or the lead pipe on the floor from Streets of Rage. Um, but what that allows you to do, it gives you a little bit of a boost, a temporary boost to allow you to have some additional abilities. Oh, here we go. So I picked up the first two here. The first one is a stink bomb loot card. That would go into my area. Uh, anytime you, at any time, you may discard this card to move an enemy up to three spaces. So you could move an enemy away from you or closer to you. And here we go. Here's one for lead pipe. Discard this card to deal three direct damage to an adjacent enemy. So, these gives you little boosts and boons which allow you to kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, have a temporary 
kind of fix on the game and uh, allow you some kind of boom which will allow you to um, uh, make more progress more quicker. But the game is very good at overwhelming you as you are going through your various phases and you're drawing out more bad guys and you're putting them on the board. You get an absolute sense that things are working against you here. Yes, you may have got the various tactics in play on your fighter that you're now can string up to get a string together some fairly fairly good combos but do remember do remember that the bad guy as well is also potentially throughout each turn beefing himself up and the more fighters that go on the board at any one time or the more minions that go on the board at any one time should i say then the harder it's going to get and you get this real tactical balance of do i attack a minion do i go for the boss do i try to stop them getting the objectives do i need more loot cards and not only do you get loot cards from the crate tokens but every time you defeat a bad guy you get a loot card as well now it may seem that you know the game is fairly simplistic in its kind of overall portrayal and that is true I think that's the beauty of a game like Street Masters, is it's not necessarily a complex game. It is kind of a, uh, a one-shot scenario. There is a small element of campaign that you can play if you want, but it's a one-shot scenario game where you've got dudes on the, on the game board and you're fighting those dudes to try and take down the bad guy before they take you down. You do get this absolute sense of building up combos, of building up moves, of becoming stronger as the game progresses, and you also get that sense that <laughs> the bad guys are getting stronger as well. Now, as I say, it's fairly, fairly simplistic in form and it's all explained in the rule book. The rule book is um, functional, I think is probably fair to say. And that is um, certainly a gripe that I have on uh, for Street Masters, and I know it's a fairly common gripe as well, is that the rule book, whilst being functional, is a little bit too ambiguous. I think it's fair to say that Street Masters is not a difficult game to learn to play. Um, you know, you are literally moving your fighter, fighting people, having fighters move against you and try and defeat them or defeat the objectives. And that's absolutely fine. And the rulebook itself is fairly good. It's 16 pages long and it gives you the basics of the game with some variant options in there as well. The problem is that with a game like Street Masters and certainly the Aftershock Edition, where you have all of these different fighters, all of these different stages, all of the different bad guys that you can fight against, is it's going to cause a level of ambiguity because not all rules are relevant for everybody. And unfortunately, the rule book is not quite developed enough um, to uh, kind of dissolve a lot of that ambiguity. So you end up kind of Becoming a little bit stumped as you bring new bad guys onto the board or fight in a different way or bring new rivals onto the board. For example, with rivals, it tells you that when you're playing a rival that you put their token on the board next to you and you'll put their card in your player area. It doesn't actually say in the rule book as to whether you would treat that card in your player area as a card that you would use as part of your turn or whether you have an independent turn from that. And there are these little omissions in the rule book and the little ambiguities that I know have caused concerns with some people. Some people have actually said it's a little bit fiddly. It's not, it's just a kind of a, a, a kind of a, a, a wide, a, sprawling game that has many different facets to it that aren't all covered in the rule book. I think what I've noticed is certainly is there uh, is any ambiguity on the players, or on the fighters, on the bad guys or on the minions. Once I played around with them, then it all kind of makes sense. But it does leave you hanging a little bit. Uh, and I think that's, you know... <sighs> You look at some of the rule books out there, and there's some far worse rule books than this, and it is very easy to read. I read it on the plane going to Essen, and by the time I came back from Essen, you know, I've got the basics of the game down. Um, but it is a rule book that potentially could have done with, I don't know, maybe a Paul Grogan game rules esque kind of over the uh, brush over of it, and just a little bit of tightening up of what's in the rule book and adding out some of those uh, those ambiguities would have made it better. But that's not, you know, that's not the, uh, the only issue with the game. As you can probably tell, I, I genuinely, genuinely think this is a fantastic game. I wouldn't have played it that many times did I not think it was really, really good. It speaks to a certain part of me, but there are other things in this big box of Aftershock that you just think, oh, maybe if they'd have just done a little bit more. Some of the, uh, the gangs that you're fighting, they don't have minis. And that's because they were a stretch goal in the original Kickstarter and they never reached that stretch goal, which 
is a bit of a shame because you may have to use tokens for bad guys. And I think that when you get into a box like Aftershock, uh, which was a separate Kickstarter, that maybe they should have, uh, you know, Blacklist Games should have completed that cycle and provided the minis for some of those factions as well. And the way that you get some of the expansions, I haven't got all of the expansions. I've got the Redemption expansions, the Twin Tigers expansions. I haven't got the Battlecon bad guy, uh, the Battlecon minis as well. It means that uh, the way that they're packaged is I've got at least one faction where I have half the cards for it and maybe the minis, but I don't have all the cards because they're in another faction box and it's just that slight kind of oh lack of joining things up a little bit which make it you know just slightly not annoying but just a, a, a minor missed opportunity um other than that i think my gripes with the game you take the rule books out of the way uh, the rule book out of the way and you take the fact that you, you may be playing some factions with the tokens is you have an efficient and streamlined game here which provides a very quick satisfying fighting experience So, final thoughts on Street Masters by Blacklist Games. Look, if you've watched this far in the video, then I don't think it'll come as a surprise. This game scratches a very particular itch for me. I think the beauty about Street Masters Aftershock uh, is the fact that I can, because of the efficiency of what's in the box itself, is I can get the game down, I can set it up, I can play a game and tear it back down and put it away within about an hour. And that is a very, very good thing because what where Street Masters Aftershock and Street Masters itself really, really shines is these one-hit scenarios. Now, within the box, there are some cards which allow you to string scenarios together uh, and uh, create a, a, small, a number of small campaigns. And that's absolutely fine. I've played a couple of those and they're okay. But for me, this is real... Oh, almost a beer and pretzels type game. This is a game where I want to spend an hour laying it out, playing the game, putting it away, and then maybe get it out another couple of days later and have another one or two games for it. And that's where this game absolutely shines. Look, this game is not going to be for everybody. It's not an in-depth kind of strategic game. It's very much a tactical game. It's a one-shot one game, if you like, each time that you play it. Um, so if you're looking for deep and involving gameplay where you really, really have to think about, you know, what your next moves or your kind of chess moves are going to be, three, four, five moves down the line, where you are constantly being mentally tested, then this game may not be for you. It is a quick game. It's a fast game. It's an action game and it does not shy away from being that type of game and that's where it really really hits for me look i can play i don't know a game of trickerio and i can set it up and it takes a while to set up and i can lay it on the table and i can spend maybe three hours playing trickerio and that gives me an altogether different type of experience but for what i'm looking for from street masters it delivers on almost every single uh part that it could deliver for me, this is almost the pinnacle so far of the uh, the modular deck system that the Saddlers have, uh, have created. I like Brook City. Brook City is a little bit more sprawling, a little bit more involved, uh, and certainly more strategic as you have many different fa uh, many different kind of facets that you're trying to manage at any one point. Street Masters has less, but it's a tighter, almost more sublime experience for that. It doesn't shy away from what it is. It doesn't pretend to be anything that it's not not it is a uh, an action film it is a jackie chan film in board game form and i really 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 like that uh, that about street masters whereas in brook city if you remember from my review my problem with brook city is it harkened back to uh, kind of the large scale action buddy cop movies of the 80s but it had no big end game and the beauty of street masters is that all the while you're chasing down the bad guy uh, in this case it's dimitri and you feel like you're going to an end game scenario um, and an excellent thing about it is you play right to the very last turn i had a game last week and i was down to my final health i had one health and i did not think i had any way of defeating the bad guy at the time however my cards came out in such a way i managed to get a loot crate which gave me an additional three hits and that very last turn i went from almost 99 percent certainty that i was going to win it uh, sorry lose it to winning the actual game and that's what i really like about it is 
just it does not let up in how it goes in, in how it progresses it puts the pressure on and that pressure is constant throughout the game as the number of minions go on the board as the boss gets stronger as you get stronger it's a really really tight experience it's not perfect as i mentioned it's not going to be for everybody the rule book has put some people off which is a bit of a shame a little bit of a polish on that rule book and maybe one or two of the components could have made it really 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 shine i understand what's happened you know money is obviously key when they're producing a game it would have been nice to see some of those additional minis in there and maybe that rule book <clears throat> having an external polish or two but other than that i'm so glad in one way that I did not just get Street Masters as I couldn't, I wasn't uh, in the board gaming world when uh, Street Masters came out. I'm so glad I got the opportunity to get the Aftershock box. And my big, big kind of suggestion to anybody is by all means buy Street Masters, uh, buy the core game because I think you know, at some point the Aftershock and all the expansions are going to be on the Blacklist uh, Games website so you can build to that. If you really, really have this kind of itch like I did to play this kind of game, make sure you get Street Masters. If you can, get the Aftershock box and everything that goes with it, trust me, you will not be disappointed. There is so much playability and replayability in this box that this game has fast become one of my favourite games to play. I think it's a stone-cold success and I'd like to thank the Saddlers and Blacklist Games for producing this. No, but not board gaming. Tell us what you really think about it. Yes, I think <laughs> that speaks for itself. Look, thank you all once again for joining me. I've been Mark. I'm your host at Not Board Gaming. Please don't forget that you can join us on Facebook. That's Not Board Gaming, always B-O-R-E-D. And on Instagram, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel also. Look, guys, that's been a blast for me. I've really enjoyed playing this game. I will play this uh, a, a lot more in times to come. Thank you once again for joining Not Board Gaming for this review. Do remember, you can like and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out our other videos. And until next time, if you can't find anybody else to play with, there's nothing wrong with playing with yourselves.